In this video, we want to review the idea of linear dependence and linear independence of abstract vectors such as polynomials and functions. So by definition, a set of vectors v sub 1, v sub 2, etc., v sub p, is said to be linearly dependent if there are scalars c sub 1, c sub 2, c sub 3, etc., c sub p, that are not all zero, which means at least one of them is not zero, such that this relation c sub 1 multiplying v sub 1 plus c sub 2 multiplying v sub 2 plus etc plus c sub p multiplying v sub p is equal to the zero vector. So the set of vectors is linearly dependent if there are a set if there is a set of scalars that are not entirely zero such that the linear combination of these vectors with this set of scalars is equal to the zero vector and this set of vectors is set to be linearly independent if this is not true so this set of vectors is linearly independent if this equation is only possible when all these scalars c sub 1 c sub 2 to c sub p are equal to zero. So the only solution to this equation is the trivial solution, all the coefficients equal to zero. So to verify that a set of vectors is linearly independent, all we need to do is to see if this linear dependence relation implies that all these scalars must be equal to zero. If this implies that, then this set of vectors is linearly independent. So the tricky part is, what is this zero vector? Depends on the vector space, you might have different zero vectors. So in the vector space, P sub 2, which is the set of all polynomials of degree 2 or less, the zero vector is this polynomial that is zero for all values of x. This polynomial is the zero vector. And in the vector space, that is a set of all continuous functions from 1 to 10, for example, the zero vector is this function fx equal to zero for all of x in z 1 to 10. So if you plot the curve of this function, then it looks like from 1 to 10, it's this segment that lies on the x-axis from x equal to 1 to x equal to 10. 